Uh, we're going to do the scripture antiphonally, so one verse and then the other verse. Uh, Sue's going to take one side. I'm just trying to work out how to. If, if we divide there. The owners. Straight through the middle. If you're the owners. that way to me, I'll. Yeah. Me, yeah. And you will need Psalm 25 in front of you. We did have it up as a YouTube clip, but uh, as you can see, the YouTube is not quite with us. And Sue's, Sue's going to be to my right, to your left. Uh, Psalm 25, with me. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Should we start again? Sorry, it probably wasn't really clear. Psalm 25, uh, NIV, but uh, it's uh, yeah, we did, we did have it all set up as YouTube, but uh, that disappeared. Uh, shall we start again? Psalm 25, in you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without a cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great love, mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his ways. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. They will spend their days in prosperity. Their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from all anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope, Lord, is in you. Deliver Israel, O God, from all their troubles. Thank you. Let's so pray. Let I think the video will work now. I have to turn the other. Okay. We may actually have the video working as well in a, a brief moment. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we give you that word from you, Lord. And we ask that you bless us now with the truth of your, your word to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the reason to do that is because reading the Psalms was something that Jesus did. Jesus quoted the Psalms more often than any other book in the Bible. Yeah, he would have said it, probably would have sung it. We don't actually know what the tunes were, but he uh, uh, would have been present when it was sung. And I'm sure he was singing as well. Um, the Psalms has been called the prayer book of Jesus. It's also been called the song book of Jesus. Uh, and this morning we're taking Psalm 25. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame. Uh, the Psalms can also be seen as a, like a mental health handbook like a self-help book we'll go into that in just a minute um 
When David is praying this psalm, he's praying it from a time of anguish and conflict. And uh, it comes across in the psalm that he's quite lonely, he's isolated and he's afflicted. Uh, one of the ways that we describe this, this comes into the book that Matt was recommending, is lamenting. Yeah, sounds really old school, doesn't it? Lamenting. Uh, it means sometimes when we express deep sorrow to God. Uh, two or three weeks back, I mentioned uh, Russell, my brother, um, sadly committed suicide. 20 years ago, yeah. I didn't do a very good job of because I was overcome with emotion, but um, I really felt that God was saying, no, you need to, you know, step out, you need to, you need to say this. It's not something I talk about. Um, I talk about it a little bit with my mum on occasions. Uh, and there's, because it was such a trauma, uh, I don't really remember. There's lots and lots of stuff I just has gone. I remember the actual, the actual day, which was awful, and then the day of the, the funeral. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is as a testimony that having spoken to you as a fellowship, uh, God allowed me to lament. Yeah, I had grieved and I'd mourned. Uh, I hadn't complained. Yeah, it's like lamenting is a complaint that we can offer up to God. This is just awful. Yeah, it was just awful there. Um, it was quite considerably younger than me. It was 17 or 18 years younger than me. So I was like, almost like an uncle. I, I was away from home when he was little. And um, it, was, it was probably the biggest trauma that I've experienced. And um, I was able to lament, yeah, because I shared with you as a fellowship. Yeah, as I say, I occasionally talk to mum just about memories about Russell, but I'd never lamented, yeah. And the book that Matt's... Uh, going to use for the Lent thinking is along those lines. It's to do with lamenting before God, complaining before God about what we go through, even when we're at fault. I'll just start by saying what lamenting is not. Yeah, we were on, um, we we're up in Glasgow before we went to my mum's and um, I think Scotland probably has more 20 mile an hour limits than anywhere else I've ever seen. All the villages around my mum's, um, where she lives in Fife, are 20 miles an hour, not just outside the schools, but everywhere. And I was driving up, Sue doesn't know this, but I was driving up to park the car away from Socky Hall Street in Glasgow. And uh, it's like Borges Boulevard in, in Peterborough. It's like four lanes across. Um, and so I was going at a reasonable pace for, you know, urban traffic. And uh, you can guess what happened. The flash, the dreaded flash. You ever had that? The double flash. Flash for your front number plate. Flash for your back number plate. Uh, I was just that sinking feeling. You feel stupid anyway. But uh, the sinking feeling. that. And then after I'd seen the flash, I saw the 20 mile an hour speed limit sign. Um, I was, I thought I was, you know, lamenting, I, you know, I was, I was really upset. But um, God said something very specific to me. He said, uh, why don't you just get over yourself? It really did. I was driving along and uh, I thought, oh God, how much is it, Dave, to do a, what is it called? Speed awareness, driver awareness course is about £120, isn't it? And uh, you don't get points on your license. Shows you I know about these things that... Uh, <laughs> That, that was exactly my thought, exactly my thought was I've done it two years, about a year ago, shame, uh, not in Scotland, and uh, I've been caught, caught out again, and God really specifically said, this is, you, you are not lamenting, yeah, you are just having what Jewish people call kvetching, just, just grumbling uh, about this because you know we were we were covid free we were going to see my mum uh and it's a relatively a relatively small thing uh i haven't yet had the dreaded envelope come through but uh, we shall we shall see but uh, uh, <clears throat> so lamenting is a complaint we can offer up to god from the depths david is right there in the depths when he's when he's complaining like this and he says doesn't he in verse for show me your ways and when we are lamenting we need god to show us his ways 
And uh, it's very obvious that David is prepared to be honest. Yeah? I find it really difficult to talk to you as a fellowship about losing Russell, uh, but it did really take me on because I was able to then take it to God and say, you know, even after all these years, I still have the sense of where was God? Um, and God answered me in that. Uh, David is not pretending in the Psalms. A nice little story on Radio Norfolk. If you want to buy, I forget what um, shop it is, but if you want to buy your Valentine present from this particular shop, they will wrap it up so badly that your loved one will never guess that you didn't bother to wrap it yourself. <laughs> they, char they charge you two pounds, two pounds fifty. <laughs> And they've, they've got some, they, they, they asked in the shop, they, they, they did it for Christmas apparently, and they did it really well with a nice bow on the top. And all these, I presume, mostly men, were coming back saying, this is really lovely, but uh, my loved one is saying, you never wrapped that up, did you? <laughs> so this time for Valentine's Day, they've offered somebody that really can't do a very good job to wrap it so badly that, that nobody would think you'd just not bothered to wrap it up yourself. So, Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, having said that, uh, I was so bad at wrapping things that um, back in the day when Emily Clark and Lois uh, Butcher was in my class, I used to get them to wrap my Christmas presents to soothe. They were, they were, they'd spend all the break time wrapping up beautiful bows on top. <laughs> but uh, it was obviously intended for me to... Anyway... Uh, Kintsuji, we, we had a look at Kintsuji, didn't we? That, uh, there's some beautiful pictures on, online. We tried to get them this morning, but we didn't succeed. You take a bowl that's broken and you thread it together with gold and it then becomes precious. That's the interesting thing to me about Kintsuji is this sense that something that was, you know, worth, worth you know, something becomes so much more valuable and that's such a picture of what jesus does for us it's such a picture of what's happening in the psalms as well jesus takes us and puts us together with the gold of his life so uh, <clears throat> so how do we approach god in verse four it says show me your ways but what does that actually mean uh, in verse 9 the clue is humility yeah we need to be humble enough to approach God that's why we say the Psalms yeah is we need to be humble enough to use words that are not necessarily our own for God to bless us uh, in the book that Matt's going to use it has a very uh, challenging one sentence i chased it up because it was such an interesting sentence it's from a chap in america called peter scazzero c s c a z z e r o if you want to youtube him uh, and this is what he says about david's honesty in the psalms david knows in the psalms it's impossible to be spiritually mature and remain emotionally immature that's quite a challenge, isn't it? I, I, you know, I had to chase it up because I didn't. I, was, I, I thought, do I really think that? And uh, I mentioned it to Sue, and she sort of said, "That certainly that counts you out. It counts most of us out." <laughs> what did you say? You said something like, "Yeah, something along those lines." But apparently not. <laughs> I was talking to someone else. <laughs> Peter Scazzaro says, "To be spiritually mature, you have to be." emotionally mature it's such a challenge yeah it's a, it's it's uh, and i would just commend you to 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 follow up matt's thing for the lent course because that's that's what it's about the, the lent course will focus on lamenting and it will also have this uh, thread through it that to be emotionally mature you have to be spiritually mature and also to be spiritually mature you have to be emotionally mature. I don't mind if you disagree with me, okay? If you, if you, if you, if you feel that that's way off the beam. It's, it's a very different thought for us as Christians, I think. And this is what this chap says, Scazzaro, Pete Scazzaro. The degree to which we are willing to give Jesus access
access to what's deep beneath the surface of our lives is the degree to we, which we will experience freedom in him. I'll say it again, it's a complicated sentence. The degree to which we are willing to give Jesus access to what is deep beneath a surface of our lives is the degree to which we will experience freedom in him. It's a very different thought for, for me personally, but it did chime into what I was saying about lamenting, is when we offer our deepest feelings to God, God deals with them, and that is a step in spiritual maturity. We've got our strap. Not that one. The one that says over there <laughs> that we may be that we may present everyone mature in Christ. To be mature in Christ is to be emotionally mature. That's partly what the Lent course is going to be doing. So let's just do a very quick health check on our mental health. If any of these things chime with you, then I believe that God is saying he wants to deal with them. This is about emotional maturity. I am a mistake. Is that something that at any point in your life resonates with you? I am a mistake. God wants to deal with that. I am a burden. It's one of the conversations I have almost every time I see my mum, and I'm sure folks that are have got elderly relatives, they always say that, don't they? I don't want to be a burden. I am a burden. If you have that sense, God wants to deal with that. I am stupid, yeah? I was very fortunate as a youngster that I had brilliant, I mean really brilliant teachers. Uh, I was less fortunate that I was in a class that had really brilliant students. I mean really, really brilliant. Everyone in the class was brilliant except me and this guy called, well, that's what we felt, me and this guy called Tom Gorman. And this was in the old school days when the, the, the kids that, you know, were the, 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 the shiners in the class were at the, at the front. And so me and Tom Gorman generally got to sit at the back. And, uh, but they were just thinking back, they were just so incredible. And I did feel that, I felt for years, I am stupid. Uh, you sitting here today, as you are, yeah, you are one of the finest creations intellectually that God has made, as you are, irrespective of education, irrespective of how clever or otherwise you think. So if you feel that I am stupid, then God wants to deal with that. That's what the Psalms are about. David is seeking his mental health. I am worthless. I think everyone can put their hand up to that, can't they? At some point, we do feel worthless. God wants to deal with that. I am not allowed to make mistakes. Yeah, how many of us have felt that in our lives? I don't have the right to experience joy or pleasure. Many, many people feel that, that you know, in the Christian community as in anywhere else, uh, I am not allowed to experience joy or pleasure. And taking a step on from that, I, have a, I don't have a right to feel. Yeah? Because we block off these things, we then become so that we feel numbed by it. And all of these things are dealt with in the Psalms. And they're dealt with in the Psalms when the Psalms are lamenting. Let's just look at... Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 26, and no, sorry, Matthew 6 and verse 33. Matthew 6 and verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his right and all these things and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Uh, in the Lent course, we're going to deal with those emotional sides. We're going to deal with lamenting, but we're going to be seeking 
the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And that really does feed into our emotional well-being. Let's look also at Acts 5. And in Acts 5, the apostles are on trial. Acts 5 and verse 27. The apostles were brought and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. He gave strict orders not to teach in his name. And yet, and he said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. And Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. So we're seeking first the kingdom of God means that God enables us, yeah, enables us to be spiritually mature, enables us to be emotionally mature. He takes us on step by step. Uh, we mentioned about Kin Suji, and that's what Jesus does for us. He puts us back together with these bands of gold uh, just by being with God. Yeah, this chap that's behind some of the thinking about the, uh, the Lent book is, uh, was is a, a full-time pastor in New York. Very busy, very um, urban, very mixed, uh, difficult parish. Um, and he's introduced just times of silence and quiet just to be with God for all the people that work for him, for all the people in the church. Because this is what uh, Henry Henri Nouwen, if you say it that way, Nouwen, Nouwen, says that when we have joy and when we have hope, they're both rooted in gratitude. Yeah, joy and hope for Christians are rooted in gratitude because joy we can get hold of, can't we? Joy, gratitude, I'm joyful because, you know, it's a sunny day, I'm grateful to God. But hope is also rooted in gratitude. It's because, it's because of what God has done for us that we have hope in what God will do for us. And Jesus is that hope incarnate. Jesus came to be our hope. Jesus never gave up hope. There's one time in scripture where Jesus appears to be on the verge of despair, doesn't he? When he says, can you take this cup from me, Lord? Yeah, but Jesus moves on for that. And that's why it's an amazing thought that Jesus needed a prayer book. Yeah, Jesus needed to pray the Psalms. He needed those words outside of himself to express not just how he felt, but how the community felt, how David felt, and how all through the ages the people of God had felt. Let's just finish with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do ask for your maturity and we ask for your hope. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen.